All right, so we're back for another basing tutorial in this case, not a painting tutorial. Um, and today we're going to be painting a sort of rocky base, I guess you'd say. Didn't know exactly what to call it, and if I'm honest, I haven't made the thumbnail yet at time of filming, so I don't know what I'm going to call it. But we'll say rocky for now. So, first thing we're going to do is get our rocks. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to use maple bark. Here is a piece of it right here, some scraps from an earlier project. Um, this, I literally just went out into a local uh, state park of mine. This was laying on the ground. I, I do not condone pulling it off trees, but when the tree has fallen over and is dead and it's just on the ground, I'd say fair game. Um, so yeah, I just grabbed a bunch of this, came home, uh, put it on a cookie sheet, baked it in the oven at 300 for about an hour just to make sure everything is nice and dried out and everything is nice and dead more importantly uh so here it is so then we're using a 32 mil size 32 millimeter base for this so we're just going to take some of this and we might need a knife and we're just going to pop a couple of these layers off there we go just pop a couple layers like that and then we'll just break it down to size and just compare it to the size of the base. Just knock a little bit more off. All right, so there, that's about the size of our base. And then just to make the base a little more exciting, we'll put maybe a little piece under like that. There we go. So I just put, put another little chunk here under there and that will also help flatten the surface of the base so our miniature will sit on it nicely. So then all we're going to do is take some super glue and I'm, what I like to do is take the top piece off and then hold on to the bottom piece because that's where I want it and then I just put some super glue around it like this without moving it. There we go. We'll just leave that right where it is. And then we take our bigger piece or a top piece, doesn't have to be bigger necessarily. And I'll just put some super glue around there on the bottom. And then we'll just lay that down on there like that. Push it down. Make sure that it... Actually, you know what? Looking at it, I'm going to flip it. I think I want this sort of stratified bit in the front. So I just flipped it around so that... And this looks like a good spot for our miniature to stand. So, I just let that dry, and once it is, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, we're back, and our super glue is now nice and dry, and that is key because we don't want to be putting our next paint on there and uh, have our brush hit the super glue because that can ruin your brush forever. So, our next step is going to be some technical paint from Games Workshop, uh, Armageddon Dust in this case. You can use any texture paint for this though. You can also just use like a sand glue water mixture. Uh, I'm just using Armageddon dust because it's convenient and easy in one step. So I'm just gonna put this all over the base, not on the rock, but everywhere else. And just kinda, don't have to go all the way under the rock, but just under the rock enough so that at a little bit of an angle you don't, uh, you don't see it. And I will blend this up to the rock a little bit, just so it uh, so it looks like the rock is, you know, embedded in the dirt, not just sitting on top of it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of it down here, like this. Again, just so it looks like the rock is actually embedded in the dirt, not just sitting on it. And then if you do this, like, right up on the rim like this, just make sure you wipe it off the rim before you, uh, before you paint the base room. Just get a little bit more around here, and we're good, I think. Maybe a little bit down here. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to let this dry. Um, I put it on thin enough that I'm just going to dry it with a hairdryer. And as soon as this is dry, I will come back and do the next step. All right, so we're back, and our texture paint is nice and dry. And now we're going to put on our first real paint, as it were. 
Uh, this is going to be Gore Grunt of Fur, the contrast paint. And we're just going to put this on the texture paint part of the base here. Not on the rocks, just on the base itself. Making sure to get all the way in there so that if from some angle you can see under that rock, it uh, you don't see the, the texture paint color. Then I'll just make sure to go up here on the dirt that I kind of put over the rock there. And then around here. All right. I think I'll actually go a little farther under here. There we go. And a little farther down there. All right, so now we're gonna paint the rocks, or at least the first layer of the rocks. So for that, we're going to use another contrast paint, Black Templar. And you could prime this first. Um, based on my experience painting on this maple bark, it's not a problem. The, uh, the bark takes the paint just fine. Um, I've had no problems with paint rubbing off or coming off or anything like that, but if you were worried about it, you could absolutely prime it with a rattle can or an airbrush or hand prime it if you wanted to. Uh, and I don't think it would cause any issues whatsoever. So I'm just painting this rock black so that it will accept all the other layers that we are going to do to it. So I'll finish this up. Uh, just give it a dry with the hairdryer to speed it up. And then I will come back and We'll start in on the actual painting of the rock. All right, we're back and our black paint is all nice and dry. And so now we're gonna move on to the first color of layer paint and that will be eshing gray. It's sort of a medium dark gray. And we're going to first just sort of overbrush this onto our rock. And all that overbrushing means, if you're not familiar, is sort of like dry brushing except we're not getting nearly as much paint off our brush but as you can see we are still leaving some of the black exposed so as i go over this spot here you can see that i'm not getting full coverage but it's not just hitting the edges it is hitting the flat parts and even some of the recesses but it's not completely painting the rock there at that angle you can really see what I'm talking about painting a fair amount of it but still leaving some of the black showing here and there so just do this all over and we're gonna do this with a couple different paints and so the next paint we're gonna do this with since I make sure I get it everywhere here along the sides that. There we go. And just a little bit more right here. There we go. Alright, so the next paint we're going to use now is a Dawnstone, which is a slightly lighter gray. If the camera will focus on it. There we go. Um, and this Eshing gray is not completely dry, but it doesn't need to be for our purposes. We're just going to do the exact same thing we just did but with less coverage. So we'll just go around and hit the high spots of the rock. My brush is still a little bit wet from rinsing it off and that's okay. We'll just go around the model. So on this pass, I'm looking to avoid places on the rock like here. It's kind of a lower patch right in here. And then we want to make sure to hit all the raised edges on the sides with this color. Just going through like this. Like that. There we go. I think that looks about right. And then we're going to do this one more time. 
And this next color is where we start to really get into the fact that rocks are not gray. Um, when, when you ask someone, hey, what color is a rock? Most likely they're going to say it's gray. And they're not necessarily wrong. You know, you see rocks in cartoons or in old movies that have just basic set design or, you know, rocks are gray. That's, that's what it is. Kids, books, that kind of thing. But they're not. If you go out and look at rocks in real life, some parts are gray. Some are green, some are blue, some are brown, some are purple. Not vibrant royal purple, but they have some purple hues in them. So, the first color of that is going to be blue horror. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with these two previous colors, but we're just going to focus on the extreme edges of the rock. And this can be, you can think about this as either where like the rock has been damaged and cracked off, or maybe there's some lichen growing on the rock, or the light is hitting the rock just so, who knows. But instead of using a white or a pale gray, we're just gonna use a very pale blue, just to get us going down the path of rocks being different colors. So this is now where I will pause, and I need to make sure this is nice and dry, because we're gonna come back afterward after it all is dry, and use some contrast paint on it. And this is where we'll really start to get into adding the different colors to this rock so that we don't uh, we'll just end up with a gray rock. I'm sure you'll have seen the final product in the thumbnail and in the beginning of the video, but that's what we're building towards, and this is the process to do it. So I will make sure this is nice and dry, blast it with the hairdryer, and then come back and we'll do the contrast layers. All right, we're back and our layer paints are all nice and dry. And now we're gonna use some Aetheranic Blue to start with. And we're gonna put this all over the rocks. This is going to be our first like color color, I guess you'd say. Gray, gray and light blue are colors, but you know, our first vibrant color, I'll say that. So I'm just gonna put this all over a rock, not on our dirt, just the rock itself, making sure to completely cover the rock, even down in the, the recesses. Make sure we get all of it here. We don't want any of our rock sticking out, well, sticking out both physically and uh, sticking out visually when someone looks at it. If one part of it isn't painted, it would. All right, so there we go. So then I will dry this completely and then we'll come back and add some green. All right, we're back. And now we're gonna use some Beal Tam Green. This is a, a shade paint. Um, they do still make it, but it comes in bigger bottles normally. Uh, this is a small bottle that I have left over from back when it was in smaller bottles, as you might imagine. Uh, and we're just going to do the same thing we just did with the blue, and just put it all over. Um, I am, unlike the blue, where I kind of let it pool in a bunch of places, I am going to spread this green out uh, completely. I don't want it pooling. Um, I just want to tint the rock color with it. And so I want to leave the blue in the spots where I let it collect. So I will. So I'll just do that on the rest of the rock. And then I will come back and we'll do the last one of these washes over the top before we go back and re-highlight and then add some tufts and call it done. All right, we're back, and we're gonna use some Skeleton Horde. Uh, and now, slightly differently than the last two, we're not gonna put it all over. We're just going to put it in some select areas. Just kinda put it around wherever, wherever you like, really, just to mix in some of this color. And you can let it pool. Uh, in a couple places if you want, that's just fine. There's always a healthy amount of brown in rocks. So I 
That's no problem at all. There we go. I think that looks good. So now I'll let that dry. And then what I'm going to do is come back and do the exact same thing we did in the beginning, uh, which will be the three colors again. So I'll start with an overbrush of Eshing Gray. Then I'll do another overbrush, but on less of the rock with Dawnstone. And then finally, just on the edges with Blue Horror. I'll do that off camera because you saw me do it in the beginning of the video. It's the exact same process. I'm just going to do it again to re-highlight the rock. And then we'll come back and add some tufts. All right, we're back with those colors all done. And as you can see, we now have a nice rock that has some, some bluish hues, some brown hues, some green hues in there. And I forgot to say, when I go back on the final pass and do this blue horror, I put some of it on the dirt to uh, just sort of connect the dirt with the rocks uh, because they are different colors completely, brown versus grayish, bluish, greenish. Uh, I just like to put that last color on there to kind of bring them together. Um, and so now I said we were going to come back and do tufts, but I forgot about the null oil. So we're going to add the null oil just to darken it all down a little bit, give a little bit more shading, that sort of thing. So I just do this all over the rock. It also mutes the blues and the greens a little bit. So if you don't want to do that, you can opt to skip this step or just not do this step. Um, I like it. I think it makes it look more like a what the uh, sort of environment I was going for is. But as with any step in any of these videos, you can always just choose not to do them and make it your own. So I'm just adding this. All right, we got a little cut off there at the end of that last clip, but that's okay. We were just adding null oil. Uh, and now we are going to do the tufts. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna use two sets of gamer grass tufts. Uh, these are the tiny green tufts, and these are the, uh, the darker brownish greenish color from the Highland set. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of these and place them around. So for the bigger one, I'm going to set it on the ground here instead of up on the rock itself. And then take some of these and I will place some of these directly on the rock, just like they're kind of growing out of it. Just a couple of them right here. Tuft application is always, you know, up to the eye of the beholder, really. I like to place at least a good number, I think. Get that little piece of dust or trash or whatever that is out of there. And I think that that does it, I think. Uh, so right about now, you should be seeing some pictures of the bases, with, or the base with the miniature on it, and then next to a couple other miniatures based the same way. Um, these are my 30K or Horus Heresy Dark Angels that I've been working on. Uh, and I've been giving them a base scheme. I had a bunch in the past, and I gave them a pretty boring paint scheme, which is kind of a reddish-brownish base with some green tufts. So I figured I would keep the reddish-brown with that gore grunt that we did on the dirt, but step it up a little bit, and this maple bark lets me do that with ease. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, got something useful out of it. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, feel free to like it. Subscribe to the channel, you know, all the good stuff. Um, there will be more basing videos coming in the future. I don't know how often. I think this is my third or fourth basing video. And I've been doing this for over a year now, so clearly not on a regular basis. But whenever I come across a basing scheme that I come up with that I enjoy, I like to put it on video so others can enjoy it as well. So again, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.